I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we need to approve the minutes for three, uh, four actually different days, um, and I'm going to do these in groups of uh, the first, uh, February 5th, the board meeting, and February 5th, the budget meeting. So um, I'll entertain a motion to approve those. I'll move it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Second. Um, is there discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, February 6th special session. I'll entertain a motion to approve. I so move. Second. It's been, it's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> February 7th, there are two sets of minutes, one from the regular meeting and one from the Board of Review and Equalization. I'll entertain a motion to approve those. I'll Come. move that the uh, February 7th regular meeting and February 7th board meeting be approved. Second. Okay. It's been moved, moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the final one is for the February 12th Board of Review and Equalization. Uh, I'm going to abstain from that because I was not present during that meeting. So um, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. And we're down to purchase orders um, for February 21st in the amount of $10,450. Mm -hmm. Approved purchase orders, total amount $10,450. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And we're down to accounts payable now for February 7th. In the amount of three hundred ninety-four thousand one hundred sixty-seven dollars and seventy cents, and I'll move that. Is there it's been moved and seconded? Is there discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. And the uh, um, manual checks. Well, that's yeah. Just, yeah. Okay, we'll do manual checks for this one because we have que I have questions about the, the others. Okay, yeah, okay. I do too. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, you're not sure? We just got them right before the meeting started. Okay. So I'm All trying right. to figure out what's going on because it looks different with the new system. Can we just hold off on these until the following meeting? Yeah, I'll, we can go ahead and do that. We can hold off on until the following meeting so we can get figure out what it, what's, it's un being done under the new uh, system, yeah. financial system, so I'm sure there's a few questions. Yeah, I mean, so manual checks you have here, under, there are 109,756, that's the Right, that's I the see, checks. yeah, that's the one I wanted uh, to go ahead and approve this evening. Yes, go ahead. And, and then we'll, we have questions about the others. Though. And then these, I think, are, these are actual manual checks, too. I think you can go ahead and approve those as well. Okay. Um, because they're, they're All right. they have check numbers. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, um, I'll move that we approve manual checks uh, dated February 8th mm -hmm. in the amount of $109,756.58. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Hearing none. <coughs> Hearing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. And then these are also manual. So what you have here for February 14th and February 21st, those are manual checks. Okay. And, and, and I, I'm confident in that because those are the things that we always pay with. So when I look at the detail here, they have check numbers. So these are the manual checks. Okay. I'm not sure where the accounts payable are for the 14th and the 21st, um, but I do have these. I, these are manual checks, and I think you should go ahead and approve those as well. Okay. For so, February 14th, are you talk, talking about both? Both there, boxes? We've there got are two sets. Two sets. Oh, she's separating them out by fund. Yes, it's both of them. It's both of them. Okay, yeah. so we'll need, I guess. Uh, let me, let me add it together. Well, well, I'll move to approve manual checks for February 14th, 2019. <coughs> uh, one total amount is $130,961.01. Another is $73,959.22. Second. Is there discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> and then the uh, uh, manual checks for, it was actually dated February 21st um, in the amount of $322,753.77. And I'll, I'll move that. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, and there's payroll somewhere. Uh, I'll move approval of payroll dated January 24th, 2019, total amount $267,310.81. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Hearing not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And on to uh, announcements. Uh, is, are, do you have any announcements for us this evening, Stephanie? Do not have any announcements. <clears throat> changes to the agenda so now we are down to the public comment portion of the meeting and I have several people signed up uh, we will be um, concluding public comment at 630 because we will be starting our agenda at that time so um, I'm going to take these from the top down and you have three minutes to make your comments and uh, please wrap up your comments when the buzzer sounds and we'll move on to the next person um, Madam President um, if those that can't be heard until 6.30 p.m., will they be given the opportunity to make comment at the end of our meeting? Uh, time permitting, yes. Yeah. I'm willing to sit here as long as it takes. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. That's what I want to make clear. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the first person to speak is David Levine. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, my name is David Levine. Speaking in unity with a clear majority of Jefferson County citizens, I present two demands. First, we demand the Jefferson County Commission appoints and convenes a duly qualified board of directors for the Jefferson County Development Authority of at least 12 members no later than March 15th, 2019. The JCDA needs proper governance, oversight, and accountability so that it can oppose heavily polluting industry and put Jefferson County back on a path to prosperity by attracting appropriate development according to our comprehensive plan. Second, we demand transparency in the dealings of the JCDA. The JCDA should not be expending taxpayer funds on a lawsuit fighting to keep public records secret. Fulfill Jefferson County Vision's FOIA request for documents related to Rockwell so that suspected improprieties can be addressed and proper governance restored. In April, I'm going to be a grandfather. Little Oliver is going to be living just a few miles from the planned Rockwell site. My wife and I moved out to Jefferson County from Baltimore when our first child, when we had our first child. We asked ourselves where we would have wanted to grow up, and we picked this place as the perfect place in the hopes that maybe they would believe that too and successive generations would remain close to us. We were able to move here because we were entrepreneurs. We believed the region would thrive as more and more people adopted the internet, mobile technologies, and ultimately advanced clean manufacturing and industries based on the internet of things. We believed a robust and diverse economy would support our family for many generations to come in a diverse array of practices, fields, and jobs that supported everybody. The Rockwell Project and the industrialization of Jefferson County is an incredible betrayal. It is a return to a miserable economic development model stuck in the 1980s. The economic development programs promoted by Nick Deal, the JCDA, and the WVDO attempt to save us from outside by recruiting polluting, dirty old projects that might create a few jobs through incentives that deprive the community of a corporate tax base. Instead, we should be creating locally homegrown economic development with new forms of manufacturing. According to Second Muse, which has created manufacturing accelerators in urban environments such as Brooklyn, New York, and Fort Myers, Florida, collaborative and ecosystem building is tricky. 
not many people understand how to create the necessary public and private sector relationships to make advanced technologies and manufacturing flourish. But those that do will reap rewards. Thank Please you. bring us back on track. Thank you. Uh, Liz Freeman. Hi, my name is Liz Freeman. Speaking in unity with a clear majority of Jefferson County citizens, I present two demands. First, we demand the Jefferson County Commission appoints and convenes a duly qualified board of directors for the Jefferson County Development Authority of at least 12 members no later than March 15, 2019. The JCDA needs proper governance, <coughs> oversight, and accountability so that it can oppose heavily polluting industry and put Jefferson County back on a path of prosperity by attracting appropriate development according to our comprehensive plan. Second, we demand transparency in the dealings with the JCDA. The JCDA should not be expending taxpayer funds on a lawsuit fighting to keep public records secret. Fulfill Jefferson County Vision's FOIA request for documents related to Rockwell so that suspected improprieties can be addressed and proper governance can be restored. I want to thank you for this opportunity to voice my concerns. I'm a resident of Berkeley County. This, the decisions that are being made here in regard to Rockville have an effect on all the people in the Eastern Panhandle. In order for Rockville to operate, a fracked gas pipeline is being built through properties on Morgan and Berkeley counties that were taken through a twisted use of eminent domain. These counties also have a car system like Jefferson County. Many people get their water from the aquifers underground. I feel it is your ultimate responsibility because you invited this toxic polluter into our lives to do everything possible to protect our groundwater supply. Rockwell has already endangered us with sinkholes and violations of the already lax DEP regulations. Someone is poisoning our water. Someone is poisoning our air. Someone is hurting my family, and we won't be silent anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer King. Hello. My name is Jennifer King. Speaking in unity and with a clear majority of Jefferson County citizens, I present two demands. First, we demand the Jefferson County Commission appoints and convenes a duly qualified board of directors for the Jefferson County Development Authority of at least 12 members no later than March 15, 2019. The JCDA needs proper governance, oversight, and accountability so that it can oppose heavily polluting industry and put Jefferson County back on a path of prosperity by attracting appropriate development according to the county's comprehensive plan. Second, we depend, we demand transparency in the dealings of the JCDA. The JCDA should not be expending taxpayer funds on a lawsuit fighting to keep public funds secret. Fulfill Jefferson County Vision's FOIA request for documents related to Rockwell so that the suspected improprieties can be addressed and proper governance be restored. Additionally, it is important to me that you quickly appoint the county liaison to the Charlestown Utility Board as your commission recommended to the PSC for the utility consolidation. CTAB is making major decisions about ratepayers' futures without this liaison present. I urge you to protect our groundwater supply from Rockwell, uh, uphold taxpayer funded studies commissioned by the county, which tell us our car system cannot coexist with Rockwell. Rockwell has already endangered our water supply and protected isopods with the sinkholes and DEP violations. Opponents speak of Rockwell's rights and that they've done everything by the book. We have seen through the ransom FOIAs that Project Shuttle was a covert and cohort effort that was fast tracked and corners were cut. All green lights with no yellow or red lights. And what about Jefferson County taxpayers' rights? Rockwell is a foreign corporation that will not be paying taxes. Rockwell claims they have robust science that backs their claims that they are not threats, or threat to our existence. They do not have the science, but we do, and have presented it to this commission many times. Show me one scientific study or publication that claims pollution is healthy for environments or, or humans or environments. Every single pollutant that comes out of Rockwell's smokestacks has been scientifically proven to be harmful to humans. Rockwell boasts that in their years of operation, no one has fallen ill. It's taken 50 plus years to show DuPont has poisoned the world. Rockwell's day in court will come. Thank you. 
Thank you. Georgia DeBose. My name is Georgia DuBose, and speaking in unity with a clear majority of Jefferson County citizens, I present two demands. First, we demand the Jefferson County Commission appoints and convenes a duly qualified member of the Board of Directors for the Jefferson County Development Authority of at least 12 members no later than March 15, 2019. The JCDA needs proper governance, oversight, and accountability so that it can oppose heavily polluting industry and put Jefferson County back on a path of prosperity by attracting appropriate development according to our comprehensive plan. Second, we demand transparency in the dealings of the JCDA. The JCDA should not be expending taxpayer funds on a lawsuit fighting to keep public records secret. Fulfill Jefferson County Vision's FOIA request for documents related to Rockwell so that suspected improprieties can be addressed and proper governance can be restored. I have lived in Jefferson County most of the time since 1976. As a concerned citizen and a regular voter, I affirm the need for freedom from polluting our water. Freedom from pollution includes recognizing that most of this county, and particularly the site of the Rockwell plant, rests on fragile karst topography. That underground system of limestone caves, water channels, and sinkholes affects hydrology throughout Jefferson County, even without heavy industry. Water and sewer lines will be impacted by any disasters affecting the karst system. Heavy industry at the Rockwell site will likely result in water pollution as both industrial vibration and the sheer weight of the site will af affect the hydrology. We stand right now very near a huge karst cave that's underneath Charlestown. The future health recreation and agriculture of this county depends on the choices we make now. Thank you. Sharon Wilt. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Sharon Wilt, I'm speaking in unity with a clear majority of Jefferson County citizens. I present two demands. First, we demand the Jefferson County Commission appoints and conveys a duly qualified board of directors for the Jefferson County Development Authority for at least 12 members no later than March 15, 2019. The JCDA needs proper governance, oversight, and accountability so they can, can, <coughs> excuse me, can oppose heavily polluting industry and put Jefferson County back on a path of prosperity by attracting appropriate development according to our comprehensive plan. Second, we demand transparency in dealing of the JCDA. The J JCDA should not be expending taxpayer funds on a lawsuit fighting to keep public records secret. Fulfill Jefferson County Visions FOIA requests for documents related to Rockwell so that suspected improprieties can be addressed and proper governance can be restored. Again this evening, I would like to bring the sinkholes along the bike path from Bardane to North Point to your attention again. This is the second time I've come before you and presented you with pictures of ever-growing sinkholes. Many other citizens of Jefferson County like to know what is being done about the expanding sinkholes. The sinkhole in North Jefferson Elementary School grows bigger by the day. As the heavy pieces of equipment just feed away from along with the dynamite blast, there's got to be taken a, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. This is what the wintertime does to you. This has got to take a priority that many different contaminants are entering into the below groundwater that could possibly lead to contamination of North Jefferson Well and the wells that supply the community of Fox Glen. 
JUI spokesperson, Mrs. Real, has said that someone from one of their companies is working with the school board. This has been since November of 2018. Do they want the wells to become non-usable so JUI can swoop in and save the day and supply all the water? I call this a master plan to form a monopoly. Fox Glen has some of the best water in the county. We shouldn't all have to hook up to JUI for Lee Snyder's benefit. Thank you. Sarah Thompson. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Sarah Thompson. Speaking in unity with the clear majority of Jefferson County citizens, I present two demands. First, we demand the Jefferson County Commission appoints and convenes a duly qualified board of directors for the Jefferson County Development Authority of at least 12 members no later than March 15, 2019. The JCDA needs proper governance, oversight, and accountability so that I can oppose, so that it can oppose heavily polluting industry and put Jefferson County back on a path of prosperity by attracting appropriate development according to our comprehensive part plan. Second, we demand transparency in the dealings of the JCDA. The JCDA should not be expending taxpayer funds in a lawsuit fighting to keep public records secret. Fulfill Jefferson County's vision FOIA request for documents related to Rockwell so that the suspected improprieties can be addressed and proper governance can be restored. I have been a resident of Charlestown and Jefferson County since 2015. I am against Rockwell because I love walking through the beautiful city and in this county. If Rockwell gets built, these walks will have to end. The water would be affected and that would be a bad thing. I cannot financially afford to move from this city, so I'm requesting no demanding that this be stopped. Our health and the health of our citizens is worth more than a job. Thank you. Grant Prilliman. Good evening. My name is Grant Prilliman. Speaking in unity with a clear majority of Jefferson County citizens, I too present two demands. First, we demand the Jefferson County Commission appoint and convene a duly qualified board of directors for the Jefferson County Development Authority of at least 12 members no later than March 15, 2019. The JCDA needs proper governance, oversight, and accountability so that it can oppose heavily polluting industry and put Jefferson County back on a path of prosperity by attracting appropriate development according to our comprehensive plan. Second, we demand transparency in the dealings of the JCDA. The JCDA should not be expending taxpayer funds on a lawsuit fighting to keep public records secret. Fulfill Jefferson County Vision's FOIA request for documents related to Rockwell so that suspected improprieties can be addressed and proper governance can be restored. I'm a 30 plus year resident of Jefferson County. My, our family owns a small farm and we do almost all the work there with draft horses. When data came out showing the effect of this toxic stew on racehorses, I knew I had to be concerned about our high performance animals as well. Of course, we also need to be concerned about all other stock, such as beef and dairy cattle. I'm concerned also uh, with the losses in crop production and quality that will result from pollution of our land and water resources. Would you buy produce that may be tainted by rock wool pollutants? Will our field crops be marketable? Jefferson County is the state's leader in agriculture. Let's keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you. Lou Prilliman. Good evening. My name is Lou Prilliman. I'm speaking in unity with a clear majority of Jefferson County citizens as I present two demands. First, we demand 
The Jefferson County Commission appoints and convenes a duly qualified board of directors for the Jefferson County Development Authority of at least 12 members, no later than March 15, 2019. The JCDA needs proper governance, oversight, and accountability so that it can oppose heavily polluting industry and put Jefferson County back on a path of prosperity by attracting appropriate development according to our comprehensive plan. Second, we demand transparency in the dealings of the JCDA. The JCDA should not be expending taxpayer funds on a lawsuit fighting to keep public records secret. Fulfill Jefferson County's Vision's FOIA request for documents related to Rockwell so that suspected improprieties can be addressed and proper governance can be restored. I moved to Jefferson County 30 years ago with my family where they prospered, they flourished under the Jefferson County Schools and Jefferson County's 4-H program. Jefferson County leads the state in agricultural production. Our county has about 4,000 acres in protected farmland, more than 40 national registered farms, and many thousands more acres under production. Many of our farms are heritage or centennial farms, cultivated by the same family for four or more generations. But now, many of our farms in Jefferson County are under the stewardship of an innovative new generation of farmers dedicated to building their small businesses here in West Virginia. These young agricultural entrepreneurs chose to locate in Jefferson County or returned here to the place where they were raised to put down roots, raise their families, and serve their community. The reality of Rockwell is that it will drive away business from farms, from community groceries and farmers markets, and ultimately may drive away our final generation of farmers. Thank you. Tracy Cannon. And this will be the last comment until we start our agenda and then we'll try we'll get the rest of you later. I'm just gonna go ahead and give you all this piece of paper before I start. Um, pass it down, maybe. Speaking in unity with a clear majority of Jefferson County citizens, I present two demands. First, we demand the Jefferson County Commission appoint and convene a duly qualified board of directors for the Jefferson County Development Authority of at least 12 members no later than March 15, 2019. The JCDA needs proper governance, oversight, and accountability so it can oppose heavily polluting industry and put Jefferson County back on a path of prosperity by attracting appropriate development according to our comprehensive plan. Second, we demand transparency in the dealings of the JCDA. The JCDA should not be expending taxpayer funds on a lawsuit fighting to keep public records secret. Fulfill Jefferson County Vision's FOIA request for documents related to Rockwell so that suspected improprieties can be addressed and proper governance can be restored. The JCDA has refused to respond to any FOIA that JCV, any, any FOIA from JCV, stating that the nature of their work in economic development means that they have a right to keep information from the public. However, they did, in fact, respond to a FOIA request made by Sierra Club and Potomac River Keepers. That's the document I gave you. Um, I have their response here. That was it. The email chain shows Mountaineer Gas Company congratulating Mr. Deal of the JCDA on an interview in which he claimed the Maryland Board of Public Works decision against the pipeline would not hurt the Rockwell project. The interaction shows the cozy relationship between the JCDA and the gas company building the pipeline. Environmental leaders in this area believe that Rockwell isn't just a company trying to locate in Jefferson County that happens to use both coal and fracked gas. Rockwell is a company that was invited to come to West Virginia because Charleston is working to build markets for West Virginia's coal and fracking industry. 
It is no coincidence that Rockwell would be a big consumer of both. Thank you very much. All right, we will move on, <coughs> excuse me, with the agenda. And the first item on the agenda is uh, item uh, Angie Banks, the assessor. I saw her. Oh, there she is. <laughs> and this is for approval of employment. Hello. Good evening. Um, yes, I would like um, your approval to um, start Amy Berry on Monday. Um, let's see, that's February 25th, and she will re be replacing a clerk in my office. And you give us the salary. Normally, we do the name with the salary. Thirty-two to thirteen, forty-hour week. Step B, grade two. I don't think I don't think anything's changed at this point. So. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I know what you mean about the salary schedule and all that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Well, um, and this was a replacement. Yes. Okay. Yes. The money is in the budget, and, and I have room once she's there for three months to bump her up some. Without coming thing. back to you. Right. Okay. Okay. I move that we approve the employment by the assessor's office of Amy Berry, uh, commencing on February 25th, uh, salary at $32,213. dollars Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number two on the agenda, uh, the sheriff is here. Well, actually, I think it's uh, Mr. Fletcher. <laughs> on behalf of the sheriff for a couple of items on the agenda. Hey, Ron. How are you, ma'am? Good. Um, I wish I was with the sheriff. He's in Florida right now. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> that's, that uh, would be a nice that. place to be. Right, yes, ma'am. Um, move the, oh, move the mic. Oh. Yeah, close. Move the mic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting yeah. there. All you right. need to be recorded. Yeah. Um, first is the vehicle donation. We have a Ford Taurus we've had. Uh, I can't remember the exact year on it. Um, 2006. 2006. Got it. Okay, got it. And uh, we would like to donate that uh, to the Jefferson County Emergency Services Agency um, to help them uh, with uh, one vehicle that we, we have donated before. Uh, they've had for probably about five years, and now they're looking for something to replace that and uh, they came out, uh, Mr. Kaiser came out to the office, took a look at it, it's, it's a great vehicle, uh, actually low models for the year, and uh, we would like to donate, donate that vehicle to that agency. The sheriff is trying to reduce the number of vehicles that we have sitting as far as spares, so this great. is a good we way like for it. us to. Glad to hear that. Yes, yeah. um, <laughs> we've actually, uh, on top of this one, we've donated another one to the reserves. Um, we also um, have donated others in the past to other fire companies uh, as well as the ESA. I know the sheriff has supplied quite a few agencies with the vehicles that he no longer needs, and that's a good program. Yes, ma'am. And I know ESA needs a. New yeah. vehicle, uh, new to them vehicle. Yes, yes, ma'am. And, and it's just like uh, Mr. Kaiser speaking with him. This would be just something for the transport back and forth. It's not actually on the road uh, with personnel. Okay. Yeah. I move to approve the donation of the 2006 Ford Taurus to the JCESA. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. All right. There's one more thing. I appreciate that. Um, also, next is uh, we would like to bring on Jennifer Deal as a part-time bailiff trip guard. Uh, Ms. Deal has uh, prior law enforcement experience uh, with Leesburg Police Department, also with Loudoun County Sheriff's Office. Um, so I think she would be a great asset, plus it'd be great to have another female uh, there uh, to help us not only do the, the court security, but also with the transports that we have quite often 
um, and the trips that we do with uh, extraditions and, and uh, transporting juveniles and mental hygienes and all that. Uh, we, we stay pretty busy with that. That's actually picked up the last couple months um, <laughs> between going to Tennessee, going to Pitts, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Florida. We all know how that went. Um, so, uh, but we got them. And, uh, yeah, we did. Yes. And, um, but she would be a great uh, addition to have uh, for that. So. And, and I recognize that their female female uh, trip guards and bailiffs are pretty important. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, absolutely. So and they're hard to find. But I was going to say, I'm glad that I'm glad he was able to hire a, a female. Yes, ma'am. Uh, salaries within budget. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we we, we uh, met with sheriff on that, and the bailiff uh, court security budget is looking really good on our end, and th this will be actually support because we've had four uh, bailiffs resign within the last couple months, either due to health issues or other issues. So um, this will help fill in that back that back space. I'll move to hire the or approved the hire of Jennifer Deal as a bailiff trip guard within the sheriff's department. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. All right. Uh, next on the list is uh, Roger Goodwin. We're a little bit early. Roger wants to sit around and wait till seven. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure Roger wants to go home. <laughs> Been here all day. Okay. And this is a, a request of approval of employment for uh, to fill a position in the of office clerk in the Department of Engineering, Planning, and Zoning. Roger, you may need to move the microphone. Okay. Yes, uh, the position's been vacant due to the recent retirement of an employee. Um, the current budgeted salary amounts thirty-five thousand a year. Uh, the proposed action is a fiscal year two thousand and nineteen, a fiscal year twenty twenty budget neutral action. No additional fundings needed. So I'm asking you to approve uh, the employment offer to Carmine Sicola uh, as a <coughs> office clerk. She has worked as an administrative secretary at Blue Ridge Community and Technical College. She also has an associate's degree from there in computer applications. Um, she's been working with uh, administrative duties, invoices, requisitions, preparing spreadsheets, uh, working with maintaining office equipment, um, also coordinating all incoming calls and directing people to appropriate departments. Uh, to uh, deal with their issues. She also worked for a department store <clears throat> uh, working with payroll and um, timekeeping for many employees and uh, maintained and ordered supplies and reconciled cash receipts, et cetera. And she, she fits in with what we need and I'm asking you to improve the offer of employment to her. I'll move to approve the offer of employment of Carmine Sokola. Don't know how to spell it, but I did pronounce it pretty close. At $35,000 per year to fill the position of office clerk in the Department of Engineering, Planning, and Zoning. Second. Is there discussion? <clears throat> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Roger. Uh, next up, um, we're running ahead of schedule a little, a little bit, so we could probably. Um, are, are, is everyone here for the water advisory committee appointments? Yeah, Pastor Stein's here. Okay, so we can we can go ahead and do that. We're, we're early. Are, are you expecting anyone else? Okay, very good. All right, so that's item number four on the agenda, and so. Uh, Mr. Stein, you want to come on down to the microphone, and we'll ask you a few questions and I guess the good evening. good evening I guess the good place to start is to tell us why you want to be on the water advisory committee um so I have a I own a farm here in Jefferson County and it's uh, headwaters for one of the runs here and mm -hmm. the run goes through 20 on one other properties eight of which are protected um, so that's what that's what brings me immediately here 
I think that I have things to offer to the Water Advisory Committee that would be helpful. I know that the Water Advisory Committee is interested in putting in grants to the federal government to, for funds so that we can have better water or quality advice here in Jefferson County. My job is at the University of Maryland. I, I get 20% of my salary from the state and the other 80% I have to write grants and contracts to pay for myself and for all of my employees and all of the supplies that we use. So I'm used to writing grants and I'd be happy to help Mary Sell write grants for our county to be able to keep track of what's going on in terms of water here. Um, also in my a, a weekday job, I'm a microbiologist and epidemiologist. So I'm interested in, under, so I understand very well the bacteria that are present in the water supplies. I spent a couple of years working for the EPA on a drinking water advisory commission or committee, I guess we were, we were called. And I think, and I'd like to be able to bring that, that expertise here to Jefferson County. A, right now, I, I live during the week in Baltimore County, in Baltimore. I come out every weekend. If I have to be a, a county resident, I can change my commuting schedule slightly and I will be a county resident and do the paperwork, of course. <laughs> um, so that's, that's me and that's what I think I can offer. Uh, the, the only question, um, Jane, go ahead. Now, I, I checked with our county administrator and since this is a committee that we created, the county commission, it's not a state code in the state code that's right it it's doesn't matter it. whether you're a resident of jefferson county or not so that makes things quite easier um i mean you're definitely a property owner and i know you have a vested interest here and you have some unique talents so i'm very happy that you've come forward i guess the only question i have for you is are you able to make the meetings yes okay no so you know as jane said and I apologize for calling you Jane instead of that, Commissioner Cobb. That's all Cobb. right. <laughs> <laughs> Colin. Um, <laughs> um, I, I have a vested interest here. I will, I will make the meetings. This, um, since this was actually scheduled originally to happen in January for me to be interviewed, Mary kindly offered me to participate in the last meeting in February, and I did. I'm scheduled to participate in the one in March and we'll continue on. I don't make commitments without wanting to fulfill them completely. Thank you. Does anyone else have questions for Mr. Stein? I think your question is what I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah. Your resume speaks volumes. Yeah. So, right. so uh, we have one applicant. And so thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, we have one applicant. So I'll, I'll make the motion that we appoint. Um, Dr. Oscar Stein, Oscar Colin Stein, <laughs> to the Jefferson County Water Advisory Committee for one term, three year term, ending January 31st, 2022. I'll second that motion. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Congratulations. Yeah. And thank you for your willingness to serve on the committee. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't happen often. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The the next appointment uh, interview is for the Board of Zoning Appeals. It's one three year term ending January first, twenty twenty two, and we have one person who's applied for that um, that position, and that's Jeffrey Bannon. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bannon. I know he's been on the Board of Zoning yeah. Appeals. He requested reappointment. Well, so early, I don't know if he, he didn't respond. Maybe he's or Oh, he didn't? Well, well, so that means he could be coming or he could not be coming. We'll just hold, we'll hold it if, unless yeah. every, every, anyone wants to move forward with that now. Yeah, I'm going to hold it until the time of the schedule to okay. occur. Okay, all right. Yeah, we are ahead. <coughs> and so, and then the, um, is Mr. Kelly here? There you are. Okay, uh, the, next, uh, the next interview is to the NARAMS board. Uh, come on down, Mr. Kelly. 
and that's a two-year term ending October 31st, 2021, and that NIRAMS is the Northeastern Regional <laughs> EMS Incorporated <laughs> Board. So I know you've served on that board in the past, a couple of, maybe for a while. Yeah, yeah, I thought, I thought we'd appointed you a couple of times to that board. So uh, tell us why you want to continue. Well, first of all, the board represents uh, eight different counties, members from, two members from each county, and it also reports to the Department of Emergency Services at the state, which supervises the ambulance services and other health services with the state, so we're able to give advice and recommendations to them, and sometimes they take it, sometimes they don't. But anyway, um, so that is the reason I thought, and no one else at this time had applied, and a couple of, or well, Mr. Uh, been several good people on the board, and a couple of them asked me if I'd reapply, and I said, I'll throw my name in a hat, and we'll see what happens. But anyway, uh, over my experience in this, I am a registered <laughs> nurse and a paramedic, I'm licensed as that. I used to be the director, uh, safety director and EMS director of Summit Point Raceway. I retired from there. I'm, uh, as has been pointed out, I was on the New Orleans board at previous times. I uh, was on the original board that found the Jefferson County Ambulance Authority, and then I've been on that board, and also when it made the transition to the Jefferson County Emergency Service Agency. Uh, I was uh, assistant ambulance chief for Shepherdstown Fire Department. I've been the president of Shepherdstown Fire Department, and I'm president a trustee there. Total over 45 years of EMS service. So it gives me quite a history. I'm also uh, a state teacher for EMS and the, have a teaching license from the State Board of Education. And uh, that pretty well shows my qualifications to be able to yeah. address. It's not often that we get, um, we get applicants with that kind of experience. So I appreciate your willingness to continue to serve on that board. And does anyone have any questions, Mr. Kelly? Thank you for volunteering again. <laughs> oh, and I left one point out. I'm retired, so time isn't an issue any longer. <laughs> right. Okay, well, I'll nominate uh, Pete Kelly to um, the NIRAMS Inc. Board for a two-year term ending October 31st, 2021. It's been moved and seconded. Is there a second? Uh, there is a second. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for the report. You're welcome. And all of our meetings are in Romney, so I get to see that part of the state. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty drive. All right. Um, that is... Uh, Mark, you want to go ahead and discuss the Mark Train Resolution Number Five, Jane? That's your yeah. item. Yeah. Let okay. me see. Um, I uh, got a copy of the uh, letter that the Berkeley County uh, Council is sent. Well, this is from the. I'm sorry, I had that incorrect. The Eastern Panhandle Regional Planning and Development Council. Did you did. You Commissioner Tab, I am passing out the resolution that the Berkeley County Council this adopted. Okay. Well, then, okay. So we have, I think, both of our both of, yeah. both things. Well, I'll pass mine down. So okay. we have plenty of reading material. There you go. I just thought if you wanted to pass the resolution, there's no reason to reinvent yeah. the wheel. We could yeah. use what Berkeley County had um, yeah. had passed. So that's uh, you know I I know. Uh, the funding issue with Mark is insurmountable for our local jurisdictions to overcome, but um, at least what Maryland is asking for. So um, I thought at least you know a strongly worded resolution. You know, hopefully get them to come to the bargaining table and get a little more realistic than 3.3 million dollars. So uh, as we know with our budget that we just wrestled with today it's not there uh, and I'm assuming Berkeley County's in the same position so um, 
I didn't know if we wanted to give our staff leeway to, um, you know, we could use this as a template, um, have our staff work on it, maybe change something if you think it's not quite right or whatever, but. Um, yeah, I think both the letter and the resolution are, are good. They both good. The numbers, of course, you know, some of that maybe in the letter might be able to yeah, be changed a in. little bit, but to, to suit Jefferson County. But, um, and, the, and I haven't had a chance to read the resolution, so I'm not sure what that says, but. Yeah, I, read, I read it in the newspaper, didn't read it in the fish, Oh, okay, but, okay. Yeah, I don't know if it was all there, but they had most of it. Yeah. So I'm okay with having staff um, wordsmith it. Yeah, Since, would, would staff be comfortable doing that? Or Ralph? What, no, I was going to say uh, with Governor <coughs> Hogan indicating he may run for president, so maybe he would be a little more nicer to us to get our vote. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't have any problem with it. I don't think it commits us to um, spending beyond our means here. So. Can we just uh, uh, have unanimous consent to authorize staff? Uh, Josh, do you have something? I just, I just, I mean, yeah, I totally agree with sending this. This is a serious issue, though. It I mean, is, I, I mean, like, not sugarcoating anything. I mean, we haven't seen the state legislature even discuss this really at all, and we're almost what halfway through the session. I mean, I don't know if they're, I don't know what the transportation secretary or what. We haven't seen them for quite some time out here. There's a monthly thing that occurs as far as like uh, in Harper's Ferry where a lot of us call in or attend for updates. But I mean, I'll be frank, some of the numbers that have come out of that meeting as far as ridership and stuff are pretty ugly. So I don't know how they're basing their data points or whatnot, but it's showing significant decreases in ridership, not only in West Virginia, but in Maryland stations also. So maybe that's teleworking or what. But I mean, I'd be shocked if they found the money to pay Maryland to the tune of where they want it to be to fund this train. Yeah. yeah. I, what, what I'm hoping is, and uh, the lady from the state that manage I can't think of her name, that manages the rail portion of it, she implied, Cindy, Cindy mm -hmm. she implied, as a part of the conference calls I've been on, that perhaps Maryland would accept our funding of the bus service. Um, which was what 165,000 or something that contract, but I don't know if that's realistic. But I think that's something we at least ought to go to them and say, you know. But well, we did it just we did that funding for just one year for 30,000. Okay, I know. Yeah, that's more than just us. That's, the same that's right. Thing. It's it's um, I think the bus service was just us, Berkeley County, and the cities put some some in um, because. When they renegotiated the contract to um, allow Mark to run into West Virginia one more year, they left out the contract for bus funding um, that they had with Pantran. And so Pantran went around to each of the local governing bodies requesting that we fund that bus service into the Brunswick station, which we have done. 30000 I think. It was 30000 from us. <clears throat> And according to the letter that Berkeley County uh, has written, it looks as though their uh, ridership, the trend, the trend uh, for their ridership uh, increased, and they reached 97.56% of the riders that normally ride the train are riding. So, yeah. um, one other thing too, most of these train services are subsidized by state entities or federal entities. So uh, this is what kind of ticks me off about Charleston, among many other things. I mean, they <laughs> siphon so much money out of the northern and eastern panhandles, and we don't see squat back. So if we lose this train, as much as the localities and counties and municipalities want to help, our budgets are dry. This is a Charleston issue and a state issue, as many other states. New York, they subsidize their metro significantly. So I mean, Charleston needs to recognize the amount of money we provide to the state overall. And long term, as other counties are not doing as well, they're going to look to these areas to siphon even more. So hopefully after the 2020 census, we get some more representation and start changing things. But it, it is what it is, unfortunately, right now. And so both the letter and the resolution point out that um, 
the manner in which these operations are funded are either through state or federal funding that yes. localities very rarely contribute funding toward. Um, yeah. I think what at the mark meeting I think the guy pointed out that as Josh is saying the railroad themselves are usually funded by the state or the fed the loc localities there normally upgrade their train stations and stuff yeah. like that that's more what they yeah. do their capital and yeah. we're doing both yeah, yeah. and uh, you know we, we don't get funding for transportation counties do not get funding for transportation so we just don't we can't provide what we don't get Okay, so Stephanie, do you have any questions? So you want me to draft both a letter and a resolution? I think, I mean, I think a resolution that incorporates both. Okay, we can do that. That was okay, my that's thought. Fine. I don't okay. know. Whatever, yeah, whatever, whatever that's you all fine. think is the most effective. Okay. I don't know. I think either one. Yeah. I think, I think the resolution okay. would do both. And then I'll draft it for, for Commissioner Nolan's signature. Yeah. Okay. So I'll sign if, we, if you want. Everybody sing. Go ahead and vote. You should vote to do that and authorize you. So vote to have me draft oh, okay. a All resolution right. and authorize the president to affix her signature. I was just, to, I was I just trying to do a unanimous <laughs> okay. without doing a vote. But um, okay, I'll move that we authorize our staff to prepare a resolution and authorize the president of the commission to sign the resolution. Second. Is there a discussion? Any more? Hearing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. <clears throat> um, let's go to number eight. The Courthouse Complex Committee discussion. Jane, that's yours. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to get the ball rolling. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and these are just my ideas of who to put on the committee. I think it just has to be a s very small working committee and um, come to the commission to, you know, if there are thoughts on a way to move forward. Um, I don't have any grand outline or scheme of what the magic answer is because we know the biggest question will be funding. So, um, but I think that's part uh, that the committee needs to work on if there's any way we can fund this grand grand idea um, and also what they see what we could actually do <coughs> I know we have lots of old plans um, review them and see what all we could fit on this block so the, these uh, old <coughs> were spending so much money on maintenance that um, it was, something's got to change <laughs> We just can't keep on, and they're not uh, really pub many of them public friendly or employee friendly. I mean, there's a lot of wasted. Sp so, not talking about the courthouse, but I'm talking about some of the other offices. So. And we have to start somewhere. Yeah. So this doesn't this doesn't commit to commit us to anything. Right. It's just the exploring the uh, idea. Yeah, we, go ahead, go ahead. Very fine. I was saying, are we going to include the health department building in your review or you're looking at? I realize it's not part of the downtown complex, right. but um, we're hearing stories about that too. Yeah. Well, I think we take one problem at a time. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I why don't we leave that up to the committee? I, I don't think that building is ready to come down, but it's yeah. going to need major work. I think you're referring to the HVAC, um, which I did hear back from Bill on that, and it can. He says that they can they can replace the air handler and a couple of VAV boxes with the hundred thousand dollars, so they should be able to um, fix the the um, temperature control in that building with the, within the hundred thousand dollar budget that was presented in the capital. So, all right. So uh, who wants to, does, do we have any volunteers to serve on the committee? Well, I don't know. You? Yeah, I'll serve. Can we volunteer you to serve on the committee? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we volunteer Ralph to serve on the, on the well, committee. Do, do we need to make a motion? Okay, I'll move that um, um, the commission forms a committee, and I'm going to volunteer some of our staff. 
uh, including uh, Michelle Gordon, Bill Polk, Stephanie Grove, and our volunteer commissioner, Ralph Lorenzetti, to study and make recommendations for I a problem. suggest Roger, too, since he's oh, the county engineer. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And Roger Goodwin. <clears throat> They're going to love me. Uh, to study and make recommendations for a possible courthouse complex, including funding options. I'll second that, and I would think that Roger would be offended if he weren't You're right. on You're the right. committee. Sorry, Roger. All on hold. Right. <laughs> All right. Is there discussion? Yeah. I, I mean, I'll, I'll vote for the motion, just I have serious concerns about potential funding sources, especially yeah. bond financing. Mm -hmm. But I, you can't, unless you look at it, you never know. That's so. exactly right. All right, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, well we are ahead of schedule, but that's a good thing. Uh, we can go ahead with uh, Nathan's, do we have? I was gonna do legislative updates if you wanted sure. to. Sure. Why don't we do that? Um, so Senate Bill 580, which authorizes counties to um, impose a 1% sales tax like the municipal authority. Um, it was passed by Senate Gov.org on Thursday and is now in Senate Finance, and that was the last Thursday. Um, but I see a related bill, sort of, in Senate Bill 117, which relates to incentives for consolidating local governments. And there's an incentive for counties to consolidate, and one of those incentive is a, incentives is a one point 1% sales tax, um, a 10% reduction in the jail fee for 10, year, for 10 years, and priority of road construction projects. So that bill seems to be moving very quickly through the various committees. So it looks like if they're going to throw the 1% as a carrot I'm, to consolidate counties, I'm not sure if they would give independently counties that authority for the 1% sales tax. Um, Are you talking about consolidation of uh, counties or, not, or cities in the county? It's, uh, so there are two options. One is forming a metro government which would consolidate the cities and the counties. There's a carrot, but the municipalities already have the ability to um, impose the 1% sales tax. Um, the other is for consolidating county borders <coughs> and joining some, some of those services. And then the other one is the consolidation of municipalities. And they each have different carrots that they've put in there to encourage governments to do that. They did that, uh, the legislature uh, did that uh, years ago, um, probably before 2008. Mm -hmm. They looked at that one other time. And um, obviously, 2019, nothing happened. But, um, but yeah, I, they're going to have to throw out some carrots. And, and it makes sense for some of the smaller counties that are struggling uh, in other parts of the state. It makes sense for some of those counties to be consolidated yeah. because of the services that they, they just, they're, they really struggle. So it makes sense. Um, we'll see where it goes. I mean, frankly, there's only one option for us. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I don't want to merge with Berkeley. But. <laughs> <laughs> Specify you could states. also, you could also specify merge with board. the municipalities. <laughs> yeah. right. I don't see that I happening. No. Either. <laughs> so, yeah. happen either. um, there's House Bill 3002, which expands authority for disposal of county property. Um, it would expand your authority to donate property to nonprofits or senior communities without having a, a public sale. So you have authority to donate land now to other government organizations and the federal government, but not to nonprofits. And that's something we've wanted for, for some time and have, you know, have really struggled with. So that would be good for us. Um, there's a House Bill 2663 that exempts agricultural buildings from the county building code. It's passed the House Agricultural Committee, and now it's in House Gov work. When you say agricultural buildings, are we talking, you know, we have barns and then we have plastic barns. I mean, I'm not sure where we're. I have to look up the specific going. provisions, which I'll, I can do. Well, that's okay. I just, you know, there, there are buildings that go up for two years as opposed to 20 years yeah. now. Yeah. And it would be only on new buildings. That's correct. Yeah. Um, 
Senate Bill 261, which adds a magistrate to Jefferson County, is still in judiciary, I think. Um, it's, yeah, it's, and it's been there since February 11th. Um, and I looked at that bill, and it does look like it would add a magistrate effective July 2019. Oh, the does way, it? Okay. That's, I, I'm going to have to go back and look at it, because it looks like the provisions conflict, but in one section it says... So in one section, it says they'll do it in the next election cycle, which would be in 2020. But then if you look at the provision for Jefferson County, it looks like they're talking about 2019 as well. Um, so it, it was at least gray to me as to what, when that magistrate will be coming if it passed. And that might have been an afterthought, because originally I think the bill was just, uh, just to uh, realign the magistrates according to population. Right. And they were taking some away from some of the That's right. other counties that had lost right. population. And so I think that might have been an afterthought to after they found out that they were reducing the number. Right. right they wanted to try to. So right. I don't know. And that I, just makes sense to me. And if they're adding it in 2019, I'm not sure how they're going to fund that without taking a magistrate away from someone. And they're not taking magistrates away until 2020. Yeah. So I'm not sure what the funding mechanism to fund that gap between 2019 and really 2020. I mean, the election would be in 2020, but I don't think they would take they would they would office until 2021. So um, there, I don't see a funding mechanism to fund that gap in Jefferson County. Um, <clears throat> There, the business inventory bill that we talked about, H House Joint Resolution 17, relating to the inventory tax is in House Judiciary. Um, and um, this I, I really liked, Senate Bill 623. Um, <laughs> um, it's, it was introduced by Senator Blair and it allows um, counties to notify individuals of the of their payment of taxes due by electronic means. Oh, so it no, asked the state tax great. department um, to oh. develop a plan whereby people could sign up to say I'd like electronic delivery of my tax bill and to be notified electronically like I'm sure many of you do with your you know with your regular household bills. Um, it also requires us to publish it in the paper as well but I thought that that was a nice initiative especially as you know, we're trying to update our financial software, um, providing individuals with the ability to receive the, that notification electronically and to pay electronically, I think would be a huge um, benefit to the citizenry. So um, that is in Senate finance. Uh, it went there on February 15th, 2019. Okay. And that's all I have. All right, that's a pretty good list. Yep. Thank you. Any comments or questions about that, any of that? All right. So uh, we can do county, let's do county administrator reports. I don't have any other report other than that. <laughs> okay. And I've been I, in budget with you all. I know you, I, well, that's <laughs> what I was going to say. We've all been in either budget or board of review and equalization, and I've missed some meetings because of those meetings. So nope. other than that, I don't really have anything to report if anyone else does. Have at it. Well, the only I thing I have is I went and met the gentleman at Region 9, but well, we were supposed to have our meeting yesterday, and obviously it didn't happen. So it's been moved a couple weeks here. Well, and I went to an ESA meeting Tuesday night, so, and we had about zip business except to look over the budget, so it was a key meeting. Okay. All right, so we're back at, um, uh, we're almost, well, we're still ahead. Clear on that. So we're back at uh, item number um, four, Z Board of Zoning Appeals is, um, let me see, is Mr. Bannon here, <coughs> Jeffrey Bannon here? We're still about five minutes early, so I guess we can do that when we come back. Come back and do that. And that would do be fine. That. Sure. Other stuff? Take a break, take a five minute break, and come back at 7.15 and take that up. All right, we'll stand in recess for five minutes.